Hey guys, um, welcome to this video. I'm going to talk about a few developments at the moment. Uh, there's a bit of spat online at the moment. Border models. Don't really want to go too much into, you know, the sort of name calling and bits and pieces like that. That's not really what this video is about. It's about, you know, current development. So that's going to be more relevant. But let's, let's kick off with this subject. Anyways, we've got um, the border models have made this um, announcement. I'm gonna. There's expletives in here, yeah. Um, you know, F. Tacom and Bradfield's model, they are two thieves. So there's a very strong statement here by border models. Um, what's surprising is that they put it out on Facebook social media, so we can all see this, yeah. So it's getting your business out there um, in words, using very strong words and making quite serious allegations, I suppose, against um, two competitive companies um, as regarding designs. And, and we're going to talk about that, about what these companies are, because they've been sprouting up, I think, over the last um, maybe eight, nine years, there's been a lot of companies just emerging out of China very, very quickly. Um, in particular, they've been doing armor as well. There hasn't been any of the... Um, you know, hasn't been. There's been a few aircraft manufacturers been popped up, but it's been mainly armor, and armor's getting very, very crowded nowadays. And this statement here is basically accusing uh, Tacom and Ridefield's model of stealing designs. Um, if you go back, border models, their very first release is a Panzer IV, and um, I've got a video about that that I made maybe about two year a year and a half ago i haven't put it out yet um where i build up the kit um why i bought it and you know really how good it is and we're really happy to see that new kit come out it was a really good panzer IV. uh came out by border models um uh, very buildable and it was a you know it's clearly at that point the only rival it had was really dragon models and dragon basically they sort of dropped the ball when in my opinion when they moved to these DS tracks, it, it made the kits, um, you know, quite deficient in that area. So Border Models released their Panzer IV, and we're going back about a year and a half ago, 18 months ago. Um, and then they followed that up with the Leopard. And if you see my video when I was in Shizuoka, that's about two years, is that a year and a half ago now? Um, they had that out on their stand, you know, new Border Models, um, it was a two-in-one, I think it was a 2A5, 2A6, or a 2A6, 2A7. Well, anyways, modern Leopard. And I was kind of surprised to see that because, like, why a Leopard? How did the Leopard follow on from the Panzer IV? And in this statement here, they're sort of saying that basically they, they actually uh, contracted out that design. Um, they pay, paid a design fee. And they used Tacon Factory to produce that kit. And that explains, you know, you know, why they, you know, have, they look sort of similar in a way. You know, it had that sort of tack-on feel to it, uh, as in, you know, not not too many parts, but really good amount of detail. But then you've got this insinuation that basically, after that information was made privy to tack-on, that they stole it, they're using it. Um, but there's very strong language being used. I, I, you can read it yourself. You see it on the internet. Um, they put it out in public, which is incredible to me. It's very unprofessional. And um, they've done that because Ryefield Models have made their announcement of this, the, uh, their version of the, um, of the Leopard. So they're sort of saying that they're being a victim here. They're going to be wiped out by Tacom Ryefield Model because the two designs that they've released, which is basically just the Panzer IV and the Leopard, now are being basically released by competitors. But examine that carefully. The Panzer IV, the Panzer IV has been done by nearly everybody. And um, thinking back, I mean... Well, the Dragon Panzer IV is still great. It's still a great model. Um, we've seen uh, Tamiya have released 
uh, re-released. They've retooled all their Panzer fours into a really good kit, um, you know, because everybody else is doing them. Then we got Rifield's models. They did their own version, but they've got interior kits of the Panzer four as well. Uh, who else has done Panzer fours? Mini art, um, except they do a different version. Uh, and probably a few others that I just can't quite remember. But, I mean, it's it's not a, a rare kit. It's tooled by everybody. And, um, obviously, they're upset about uh, Border now. And then the Leopard as well. The Leopard was done originally by uh, Tamiya, 2A6. And um, that's, a, that's a good kit. It needs some improvement work. But, I mean, it's a solid kit. You know, it's, it's, don't get me wrong. You know, very buildable, very nice kit from Tamiya. And then um, we saw also, um, I think it was Hobby Boss bringing out their versions of Leopards. And that goes back well before Border Model. Um, also, Ravel, Germany, they brought out Leopard 2A6 as well, 2A5, 2A6. Uh, who else has done it? Um, probably a few others I can't remember, but on top of that, now we've got this announcement that uh, Ryefield's models are bringing out another version of a leopard. So, you know, it's not a it's not a rare model, it's not a rare breed, but um, they said the design's been stolen. I'm gonna have a look at the board at the Ryefield's model uh, site now. Yeah, so this this was their announcement. It was just. Um, kit announcement and you can see it's a different ver first of all what you look at here is a different version of the leopard yeah i think it's a canadian version with the um the slat armor on it um it's not the same version that uh border models release so it's not a direct copy first of all but they've announced it and for whatever reason border models have taken particular ombridge to it and basically gone off on social media with a lot of swear words against the company um personally i think this signifies that border models could be in probably some trouble and that's a, probably the next thing to talk about what's been going on really with armor models recently what what have been the trends the last few years and everybody who's following all these kits will will immediately know what I'm talking about. So we're going to talk about that next. Of course, this is the um, response from TACOM as well, um, where they've gone out on Facebook as well, in front of everybody else, saying um, that Borders committed libel and slander. Uh, so not a very good situation all around, of course, um, pushing all this stuff out on social media i don't know if you guys can remember a few years back um basically um the trumpeteer page was pretty bad as well there was one guy who ran it and he basically you know said all sorts of stuff against any other manufacturer uh basically slating them you know writing all sorts of stuff you know on social media uh he had to return to china and he can't get on Facebook anymore, so that stopped it all. Um, but then you've got this stuff coming up here. Um, well, we won't know the outcome, well, or maybe we will, but uh, not not too good to see, is it, really? Not too good to see. Yeah, we're going to kick off. We're going to start talking about uh, TACOM, and we're going back a couple of years, basically, when um, TACOM announced... King Tiger interior detail kit. And this was, it started off a new trend in um, in kits, basically. The first one, we got a retooled King Tiger. And, of course, yeah, it had a mass of parts in it. You know, stunning detail, allowed you to build up the interior of the kit, um, showing off, you know, the full interior detail everything was done to scale thickness etc and from that point on there were several further releases that sort of followed this uh same sort of trend let's just put it that way so after the, the king tiger the next one that they really did with the interior detail was the panther as well another 
you know, successful model. Now, at the same time, exactly as that King Tiger and the Panther came out, Meng as well brought out another Panther. And um, I think as well, we got Ryefield's model as well, brought out another Panther, except they did a Panther with uh, the full interior detail. So there tended to be this sort of trend basically over the last few years when one manufacturer brings out one kit it's followed out in succession by the other manufacturers bring out their versions of the same kit and it always seems to be the same sort of basic uh basically i think we're talking about uh, uh tacom uh ryefield's model main uh in particular and trumpeteer these are the sort of and border as well that are the ones that seem to be um, replicating it but also there was a few anomalies I think one of the most interesting ones that we saw was was this kit I'm going to show you just now it was quite an unusual event um, well back about two years ago that's what the date was okay what we had was the release of this kit May 2019 Tiger Models brought out the Pansia S1 uh, Russian air defense system, which is basically this uh, command struck with uh, missiles. You know? Very high detailed kit. Um, Tiger Models, quite a small manufacturer, brought out one version. This was followed by Meng, who brought out another Pansia S1. So they brought out the same thing, basically. And it's not like a, you know, massively well-known. So it's not a Tiger. It's not a Panther. It's it's this modern air defense system. So we've got Meng on top of that. Trumpeteer brought out, yes, you guessed it, a Pansia as well. They brought out about three or four versions. And this kit was expensive as hell. Uh, on top of that, Zvezda also brought out the Pansia. So there was uh, four manufacturers of exactly the same kit at basically exactly the same time and it was an unusual sort of thing a lot of people were commenting you know like these things like bosses that just come in one after the other and as it turns out basically um and i think this is uh, a common sort of scenario now that the actual design so somebody actually designed a model of a pansia yeah an individual designed it the cad work and what they did is they offer that to each of these companies, obviously, to buy the design. And obviously, <laughs> looks like all of them accepted it. Now, when one buys it, they're meant to have exclusive rights to the CAD design. But this guy, he didn't uh, abide by that rule. And he sold the same design to at least three out of the four companies. So... Uh, that's where we have this strange event happening. And I have a feeling maybe something similar has happened with what's going on in this little dispute at the moment. But this was a really odd event, and uh, I think a few of you will remember. But it's not as uncommon as, as you would think. So the most recent news by Border is that they're going to release 135th scale aircraft. It's already available. And um, maybe this is their attempt to get away from armor now and try and branch out on their own in this. First of all, choosing different scale, 135th. They have chose a very popular subject, the ME109, be it a G6. Um, and maybe this is their attempt to escape from this um, area of crowdedness within the armor sector of these you know, everybody produces the same kit. So many different options. Everybody's confused. Which is the best one? Uh, which one am I going to buy? And this is something that they've gone out and, you know, tried to do something sort of original, I suppose, you know, by a different scale for aircraft. Now, if somebody else brings out a 135th 109, <laughs> we basically know what's going on, don't we? But maybe that's her attempt to escape it. Now, let's have a look at some other companies now and, uh, for like expand on this debate at the moment yeah what i want to talk about now is the manufacturers that are sort of bucking the trend the ones that aren't 
following into this and there's probably many others that you guys can think of that haven't that are not doing this and the first one i'm going to bring up is um gecko models okay this is probably <laughs> not the one that i wanted to actually show you because of course this austin k2 has been announced by airfix as well but generally if we look at the gecko models catalog just have a look at it we've got the lark c that's recent nobody else is making that it's the first kit done as as i think in you know in recent times in 135th of that vehicle um the daimler armored car maybe not so much the atmp this um well let's just call it six wheel drive uh atmp again like out of the ordinary they are bucking the trend they're producing kits that nobody else is and they've got a little niche they're doing this um uh quite unusual style of vehicle uh this is one of their announcements the skid steer loader again something different it's bucking the trend who else is interested in these sort of models i'm going to tell you for a fact i really am I, th this makes me happy when i see this that it's not a um you know a, yet another panzer four which is really well catered for okay we've got this we've got a skid steer loader uh People are really waiting for this as well, the Skimmer Mark II, which is not anything like the original Skimmer. So that's one company that I'd say in armor terms is bucking the trend. They're trying to, you know, they've got their own niche there um, and they haven't got any competition for this model. So it's, you know, really, really good news. Let's see if we can find some others as well. Okay, This one's not as much as, but I think Amusing Hobbies definitely needs a mention here because they've started to do these full interior t72s uh yeah there is i mean really the trumpeteer t72s are great but you know if you want that you know a little bit extra you want something a little bit different and it's an av version as well you know they have got the rival there by trumpeteer but they've done something a little bit unusual and unique there um they've announced this i don't even know what it is but it's um PT-91M, Malaysian main battle tank. Well, nobody else is going to do that. So definitely original. Okay, the Jag Tiger, maybe not so much. Centurion, I think um, it's great they cover that. It's one of the most, you know, uh, dominant battle tanks ever made. You know, probably one of the best tank designs ever. Uh, okay, you have got AFE Club, but... Uh, they didn't do they didn't do this version they didn't do the swedish army version so kudos again to amusing they haven't gone and done copies of uh af afv clubs they've done their own versions um uh, and also they did the avre as well uh which nobody else did uh, so kudos to them as well and also they've gone in this other area this you know something a little bit different and something niche that nobody else is producing. So I think we're going to give a bit of kudos to Amusing Hobbies there. Let's see if we can find another manufacturer as well. Okay, so I did I did mention Tacon before as, you know, sort of involved in that thing. But they sort of started the trend as well, these interior kits as well. But also their catalogue is a little bit more niche as well. They bring out a lot of variety in their subjects, okay? So a 116th scale weasel. So they do these tankettes in 116th scale. So... 116 scale of a small vehicles pretty manageable for space size and they're one of the very few companies doing that nobody else is making one m60s yeah afv club do them as well but um you know not you know it's not a massively covered subject again and they brought out many versions of that but more interesting i think is that they've done the um they're doing the panzer ones um and they've got a two kits in one boxing as well also they do these turrets as well nobody nobody else is really doing stuff like that they do a you know a variety of scales they're probably you know one of the companies that's also catering for 172 scale as well in some of their kits but i'm not gonna look at the entire catalog i'll we'll probably do that some of the time but i want to, i think they sort of get a mention as not getting sucked into the doing the same as everybody else but they're sort of halfway there because you know stud three again 
at least they, they did retool it, did the Panzer three. Now everybody else is redoing it, but um, generally TACOM, they do produce a few kits that are quite interesting. So I think uh, Meng, I think they definitely, they're similar to TACOM, even maybe more diverse because their catalog as well contains different genres as well. They do aircraft, they do cars, armor, even fantasy subjects as well. So in that case, again, they're not, as much being brought down the line of, you know, let's make the same as everybody else. They definitely have some very unique kits in their selection. Let's just pop one out there. Like, I mean, nobody's doing that. Obviously, did that for Japan. Uh, I want to bring out some. I think when they started off with that D9 as well, that big dozer, that was, it was showing what they would, um, you know, they were going to go away from, the same as everybody else and bring out unique sort of kits even the namer as well i mean okay i think hobby boss got one out but like the gt40 bringing out something like that um lots of different accessories as well to complement their models um they were the first ones to do the Merkavas. Merkavas is quite well covered nowadays and they have got yeah, okay, they have got the, the usual stuff. They've got the Yag Panthers, they've got Panthers, they've got King Tigers. But definitely, I mean, here, you know, this is the stuff where they started off. They're going to do different things to everybody else. Uh, certainly, nobody else has done a D9R and 135th in plastic injection. And that is, you know, kudos to them that they do look at different things to do. Um, and I think that, you know, in that way, they definitely get a thumbs up for not falling down the... Let's just make Panzer fours and Panzer threes. So. Okay, so now let's have a look at the. Um, this is the company that made that announcement on Facebook, um, Border Models, and just as a comparison, here is their catalog. Besides the one thirty fifth scale aircraft and the Stukas announced. Um, here's my prediction: if that G six doesn't sell well, I bet we will not see that Stuka. I, in fact, I don't think we'll see anything else from them unless that does well um because speaking to you know guys that i know who work you know for the manufacturers producing the aircraft is a lot more um it's a lot more difficult than the aircraft um for a number of reasons so that's going to be the first aircraft if it works out for them and i do hope it does i mean honestly uh nothing wrong with seeing more and more kits of whatever um that will it's going to be a make or break for them i think and then the rest of the catalogue is the Panzer IV. This is when they, the one that I was talking about initially, when they brought this out, I thought, yeah, absolutely excellent. I'm still stand by it. Excellent kit. Uh, you'll see a video from me later on discussing it, but it's well discussed anyways. Then they did the 2A5, 2A, it was an A5, A6, which um, everybody does, you know. Uh, and it's a leopard. And then they did more and more Panzer IVs. The same as everybody else. They did do this, which is okay. I'd say that was kind of a little bit cool that they did the Ekrami, but it's still T-34. A Tiger, which has had quite a lot of criticism about, mainly regarding instructions. Um, but that's what it is. Tiger 1. Who else is doing Tiger 1? Well, Dragon, of course, were, you know, the, basically the one to go to originally. Uh, still a great kit. Uh, and of course, their main rival, Ryfield's model, do a Tiger One before they did their Tiger One. Um, Crusader, that was something different. Uh, they announced a Panther G um, for this year. Do you think they're going to bring out a Panther? I just, I think it's suicide to be honest if they bring out yet another Panther G on top of everything else we already have panthers yeah um and also they announced panzer Kampfwagen 3 which again ryfield's model i've already got these out in the market how much room is there in the market if we keep on repeating ourselves time and time again with saying kits yes okay some have got different levels of complexity or whatever and i'm going to just going to go talk briefly about um, Tamiya now and the, the way they do things, which is a little bit different. Yeah, just, just briefly about uh, Tamiya. 
Uh, even though they've got Panzer fours, yeah, and they've brought out recent Panzer fours, they definitely haven't brought them out in a view of competing with Ryfields, Mongol, etc., etc. They seem to be going through the program of um, taking their older kits and basically they're refreshing their catalogue. But this is a succession of using the Panzer IV they brought out many years ago. The same, they updated the chassis, they simplified the suspension, made it more accurate. So, and also they've got Lincoln like tracks in them. So they brought their kits up to date, but they are not in the same way in this strange competition between Ryfields. I just thought it's worth mentioning that just in case people get confused because I think what we're seeing from those other manufacturers are definitely there's a, a battle between the Chinese manufacturers internally and, and Tammy are not part of it. They, they're just sort of doing their own thing more or less. So when you saw them bringing out a Panzer IV they probably plan to do it and although it's not exciting to many of us it definitely pleases um, some, you know, definitely have a uh, and I think, I think that's really what um, you know, I've got my own views, which are, I like, you know, quite a lot of detail. I like um, kits to have some area complexity and not to be dumbed down. But if we speak on the, on the, on the, you know, a larger level, you've got these, the manufacturers like um, Border, Ryfields, etc. If they're up against Tamiya, um, Panzer IV and your new modeler, or, you know, just want to build a Panzer IV, I think this is the kit that most people will tend to choose uh, because basically it's got the big T label on it. And I think that's a further problem for these manufacturers that are, you know, the smaller ones like Border that have just got inside this loop of producing uh, kits that are already out there in the masses made by many others. Um, so I hope they're okay, but... I just think this might be a sign that things are not all well with border models. Uh, maybe that's maybe maybe not, or maybe it's just a bit of frustration on their half. But it seems to me that the market generally, in terms of armor models, is pretty saturated at the moment. Uh, we're going to talk about one more manufacturer just quickly, just to sort of round things off. Yeah, I think it's. I think you need to mention uh, Trump Matea basically. The Trumpeteer as well, they've been basically definitely doing their own thing as well, you know, quite clearly. Um, I think uh, they're the armor king, basically, just in the sheer volume of kits they bring out and the diversity they bring out. But you can also see that things are slowing down in terms of their announcements. But, I mean, look at the stuff that they bring out. First of all, it's absolutely goddamn massive. Uh, like, this is an announcement. This um, this was only available as a resin kit for God knows how long. And now they're going to bring out that. It's big. It's going to be, you know, expensive as well. There's no doubt about it. But um, definitely their own thing. These S300s are variations of surface air missile systems. Again, these are, you know, they're priced at just below $100 or above $100. Um, you know, big, expensive kits. And, you know, they're bringing out, you know, many, many versions. So they're diverse in their very own way. And they're bringing out these huge kits. Who's buying them? That's what I want. I, I built a few. I, I do like building them. But um, nobody else is doing this at the moment. And you wonder what their scale is that they're able to, you know, bring out basically on a monthly basis, really big, very impressive models. They don't need to bat an eyelid, I think, at these other companies um, because of the scale of their manufacturing. And if you actually think about it as well, uh, well, Hobby Boss is their sister company. It basically, they don't produce as much armor, but... My God, what a big catalogue they have. So, who's going to survive when there's all this infighting? I think Trump T will be here to stay. Uh, just the way our things are. Anyways, guys, um, 
share your thoughts anyways. I, th- I think most people know what's going on if, if you're looking at what's coming out model-wise. You can see that time and time again, you can see it like there's like a, you know, Royal Eyes, yet another Panzer IV. And I think this is the offshoot of it now that you've got, um, you know, the infighting between the companies. And I think, uh, you know, it won't be too long until we see, you know, yet another, you know, smaller company fold. Anyways, this is the bear and I'm out of here.